everyone, it's Lisa. Thank you for joining me today. In today's video, I am going to be working with this new stamp set from the Stamps of Life. It is called Bird Bath to Stamp, and it comes with this large bird bath. There are three birds, a butterfly, and there are some sentiments that say, I'm grateful for you, hello, you make my life happy, thinking of you, I'm so sorry, and my friend. There is also a companion set, which is called More Bird Bath to Stamp, and it does have several more sentiments. A little bird told me, it's your special day, wishing you love and laughter, wishing a special person a very special birthday, feel beautiful because you are. There's also another bird. There are two bushes there at the bottom of that stamp set, which you can add to your bird bath, and I'm actually gonna be using those in a card that I make today. Um, and there's some other fun stamps on there. So I'm going to be working with both of these sets today and making two cards. But before I get started with my two card tutorial, go ahead and click that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Turn on your bell notification so that you'll be notified every time I release a new video. And please consider liking this video. It just helps this video be seen by other people out there on YouTube. So let's go ahead and get started. For my first card, I started out by stamping the large bird bath on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth cardstock because I am going to be doing some coloring with my Copic markers, which are alcohol based markers. And after I stamped the bird bath, I then took the two bushes. These bushes are on the more bird bath to stamp set and I just added them to the bird bath and now I'm going to go ahead and color up this image. So I'm using my Copic markers and the colors that I'm using for my bird bath are some gray colors. So I am using the C family of Copic markers. I start with the C6 on the very side edges there of the bird bath that's my darkest marker and then I'll come in with the C5 just go over that and then come out slightly towards the middle followed by the C4 so I'm just coming over where that C5 left and extending out a little bit towards the middle some more towards the middle and basically the when I do it this way when I color it this way it's going to give it a more rounded appearance. So now I'm going to come in with my C3 and just go over where the C4 left off and again extend more towards the middle. And then I'm going to come in with my C2 which is going to be my lightest color and I'm just going to just go over all of that just and including the middle just to smooth that out. Now I'm going to come down to the base of the bird bath. So again starting with my C6 just on the edges. And then I'm going to come in with my C5, just come over that C6 just a little bit and extend more towards the middle. And again, continue the process just as I did above that. Now my bird bath is going to be a gray, as you can see here, it's going to be all gray bird bath. You can make your bird bath any color that you want to color it. So if you want it to be pink or you want it to be um, purple or whatever color, that's simply up to you. I wanted to go with the traditional kind of just, you know, gray look. So that's what I was doing. So here I'm just coloring the top again starting with the darkest and then going in all the way through with the lightest. I don't think on that particular piece right there that I used every single marker that I used for the larger piece of that birdhouse because it was much a much smaller piece to work with. So here I'm starting with the darks on the edges coming in with the C4. So notice I went from the C6 directly to the C4. Same thing here on this side, coloring in with the C6. And then now I'm just going over it with the C2 and then coming in with the C4 just to expand um, that color out or just smooth that color out. So on that part, it was just the C2, C4, and C6. So you really just have to play with your markers just to see what kind of look you want to get. I do bring in the C7, which is a darker than the C6 on a few spots because I did want it to be a little bit darker underneath that bird, bird bath because there would be more of a shadow there. And then I use the B1 and B2 markers for the water. 
and then I'm going to come in and color the bush. So I'm going to color both bushes the same way. I start out with the YG09 there at the top of the bush, come in with the YG07, so just go over the YG09 and extend down a little bit more, then come in with the YG05. For, so for the bushes, it's just a three color blend there, YG09 as the darkest, YG07 as the midtone, and YG05 as the light. So I do that for the same on both bushes. Now, I do want to mention that this image is going to be cut out of the paper. Now, if you wanted just to stamp it on here and then slap that on a card base, you can do that. But I'm actually going to cut this image out. And I'm also going to, which I'm not going to show on the video, stamp out another two bushes. So just stamp out the bushes by themselves and fussy cut them out because you'll see that when I'm starting to create the card here in a little bit, you'll see that I'm actually going to, instead of just having the two bushes, I'm going to have four bushes on my bird bath. So you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through, but I just wanted to let you know that I am going to end up stamping out another set of bushes and coloring them up off screen. Okay, so for the leaves, I'm using YG11 and YG17. I didn't want to use the same color because I wanted to have some contrast, so I used a little bit of some lighter greens there. And then I have some, it looks like some pinks there for the flowers. I used the RV 11, 13, and 14 for those flowers. And I did color the ladybug red using the R29 marker. And then I also stamped out the birds on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth cardstock. So I have three birds here and a butterfly. I'm just gonna go ahead and color those up real quick using the same colors that I used um, previously. So this bird is pink. It's going to have the same pink colors, but I think I do bring in the RV10 right here, which I didn't use previously because I wanted to bring in a little bit more of a lighter pink um, on this bird. So you can see how I'm coloring it up. I'm also going to be bringing in some purples and some yellows, and I just want to mention that when I do my coloring off screen for the two extra bushes, the flowers and the extra two sets of bushes are not going to be the same color as the flowers that I colored in the um, ones that you saw on camera. They're actually going to be some purples, so you can see I'm bringing in some colors, and it's actually the blue family. But it's actually, I think, once the colors are down, it's almost going to look like a, um, a a shade of purple, which is really a really is going to be a really pretty color. So the the blues are the B63, B66, and B69. So I'm going to take those same blues and color up some of the flowers. And same thing with the yellow. I'm going to take some of the yellows in that butterfly same colors and color up some of the flowers and the extra set of bushes. So I always try to keep the colors consistent. So if I'm using a color in a flower, I want to make sure that I'm using that same color somewhere else on the card. I don't want to bring in other colors just because it would end up making it look too busy. So just kind of being uniform in the colors that I'm choosing. So the yellows that I'm using are again the Y11, Y13, Y15. I do use the YR18 for the beak. So here you see me cutting out the actual bushes as well as the bird bath. So here you can see that I stamped out each bush another time, colored it up, cut it out. So you can see this bush, the new bush, has some yellows and purples in it. Again, the same colors that are in the birds that I colored. So now I'm going to be taking a piece of my Bristol Smooth card stock. And I'm going to be doing some ink blending. So I cut this down to five by three and three quarters. And I'm using my cloud stencil. This came with one of the Stamps of Life um, class kits. Now, if you don't have a cloud stencil, I've shown this in my videos in the past, that you can take your cloud border die, die cut the cloud border die out of some thick cardstock and then use that as a stencil. So I have shown that in previous cards, so that's another option if you don't have a stencil. So I'm using some yellow inks. I was making my sky, I wanted it to look yellow, 
So the inks that I'm using are Sunshine and Lemonade. So I start with the darkest ink up at the top, which is the Sunshine, move my stencil down, color up some lemonade ink, and I just continue to move the stencil down. And when I move it down, I kind of move, I, I actually flip it over. So I'm getting a different kind of cloud each time. So I flip it over, color up the, or ink up the, um, cardstock and then flip it over again, ink it up again, and I just go from dark to light to dark to light. you switching between the sunshine and the lemonade ink. So this is the reason why I wanted to cut my bird bath and my bushes out of the cardstock because I wanted to have a really pretty background behind it. And if I would have kept it on the white cardstock, I would have had to do some masking and all of that stuff, which would have been a lot, lot more time consuming and complicated. So I didn't want to deal with all of that. And I just cut it out and made my background and just, and, and just adhered the um, cutouts to the background itself. So you can see how I adhered the bushes on the sides first and then adhered the large bird bath. I also stamped the hello stamp directly on that background and now I'm taking two scalloped rectangle dies I'm taking a large one and then one that can be fit right inside just layering those together putting some washi tape to keep them together because I'm going to cut out a border using this sky colored cardstock that's the sky cardstock from the stamps of life it gives me this fun border it's a scalloped border so it actually will cut out the hole in the middle and then I'm just making a frame so just putting the frame right along the um, that cardstock, just gluing it down, and then I'm just going to add my birds. So here is where I'm just trying to figure out where I want the birds to be positioned, where I want the butterfly to be positioned. So just kind of playing with different looks before I actually adhere everything down. So I knew I wanted to have one of the birds, like it was up on the top of the bird bath, maybe drinking some of the water. So I do put the blue bird up at the top. I decide to put the butterfly towards the bushes as well as the pink bird kind of just standing on those bushes as well. And then I'm just going to adhere this to a piece of sunshine cardstock. The sunshine cardstock measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I'm going to add that to a piece of powdered sugar cardstock which I cut down to an A2 size card base which is a four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm just taking some clear little epoxy dots and just adding a few you can't really see them I mean it's very subtle but I just wanted to add a little something there without taking away from the scene and that completes my card for my next card I am going to be using the dotted slimline panel die which looks like this it has some very small dots on it and you will also need and I'm not sure if it's going to come with the large rectangular die to cut it out you'll have to check um, the Stamps of Life website and see if it comes with it because at the filming at time of filming I do not know so I'm using some I believe it's a sea glass cardstock and just putting some double-sided adhesive tape on the back. I'm going to put that panel die face down on my cardstock and put the large rectangle die around it so that it cuts that die out of the cardstock. And then I'm going to remove the dies and there is my fun background. I'm going to add some sea glass ink to the edges of that. Now I really love this die because it actually reminds me of little raindrops. I mean I know that they're not raindrops because they're circles and raindrops probably are more oval but nevertheless it kind of reminded me of that. You can also use it for snow and I knew that I wanted to use it for this scene. So I also took that large rectangle die, die cut a piece of the powdered sugar cardstock because I'm going to adhere my dotted panel directly to the top of that powdered sugar cardstock. And it's gonna fit perfectly because they were cut with the same die. Now remember that large rectangle die, if it doesn't come with it, you'd have to have the slimline card die set or there might be some other slimline panel dies from the Stamps of Life that you might have in your stash that actually have the large um, rectangle background um, that went with those. So here I just used a border die. I used a cloud border die. Die cut a piece of powdered sugar cardstock. I used a hillside border die and die cut this um, flower paper 
and I'm going to use both of these on my card so I'm using some ink here just to ink up the edges of that pattern paper so that is the lemonade ink just to add some dimension I'm going to use some of the sea glass ink to ink up the edges of my cloud and then I have two grass dies that I cut out of some green apple cardstock and those grass dies I used the grass from the rounded corner step up card die set I love the grass in that set and I use it quite often just because it's long grass and that's what I was going for. There is a grass die in the border set that includes the other two border dies that I'm using here, but the grass that's included in that is much shorter and I wasn't that wasn't the look that I was going for. So I'm just starting to build my scene and just seeing how I want this to look. I knew I wanted to have the grass to appear on top of that hill. So I'm gonna go ahead and add glue and I'm adding the hill to my panel. I didn't put it all the way at the bottom, but that's okay because the grass will cover that up. So that little piece of cardstock that's showing at the bottom, it'll be covered up. So I do cut off the excess um, pattern paper that extends on the left and right edges. And here I'm just putting some glue at the bottom of that border and a little bit of glue throughout that grass. And I'm going to add one of the layers of grass, just even with the yellow border, cut off the ends. And then the other piece of grass will be at the very bottom of that panel, and it will cover up that um, space that I left there. Notice that I'm not putting glue all the way up to the very edge of this particular one, because I want to be able to fit um, the bird bath in between the layers of grass, like the bird bath is in the grass. So that's why I like to layer up my grass. So I'm going to snip off the edges, and that bird bath is going to be tucked right between those two layers of grass. So I'm going to go ahead and add glue to the back of my bird bath and then add that to my panel, slipping it right through there and then just pressing everything down and you can see how that bird bath it fits perfectly on the width of that slimline card so the cloud is going to be towards the top obviously but I am going to kind of put it at a little bit of an angle notice I'm not putting it completely straight I'm just putting it at a little bit of an angle because I didn't want it completely straight and then I'm just snipping off the ends and off camera, I did stamp out um, Wishing You Love and Laughter. And that is from the More Bird Bath to Stamp set. And here I'm going to add some birds and another butterfly. I did color these off camera, but I used all the same Copic colors as I did on the previous card. So I didn't want so much of the white showing around the edges. So I'm just taking my little mini scissors and just snipping off some of the white. I wanted more of that blue background with the polka dots showing than anything. So I just wanted to snip away. So you can see how just by looking at this card, those polka dots look so pretty. It almost reminds me of rain, even though it's not rain. And as I said, you can use it for snow. You can do a, a night scene, maybe use it as stars for your night scene, put maybe a piece of yellow cardstock in the background instead of white. That would be pretty as well. So, so many options, or you can just use it for decoration, just have some, add some interest to a card, but I really love this panel die. I am adding, adding the butterfly at the top. I think that looks really pretty up there on the cloud. And then I'm going to add this panel to a um, yellow piece of cardstock. That sunshine layer is three and three eighths by eight and three eighths. So just layering that on. And then my powdered sugar card base, you can just use your slimline card die set to cut out the actual card base. Or if you don't have the slimline card die set, you can just take a piece of eight and a half by 11 piece of card stock, cut it to eight and a half by seven, score it at three and a half inches, and you have your slimline card base. I do add a few of the clear epoxy dots just to add a little something, but not to take away from the scene on my card. 
And that's going to complete my card. So I hope you liked this two card tutorial. I hope that gave you some inspiration using your sets. I'll be giving you some more inspiration when the card kit is released for this month. So make sure you subscribe and turn on your bell notifications so that you don't miss out on that. And once again, if you like this video, please give me a like. Thanks so much for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.